Okay, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to my tips and tricks video and in this video I'm going to show you something really cool uh, that I recently came across uh, maybe uh, it's known to a lot of people but to me it was entirely new and I think it's it's a pretty cool thing that you can try so what I'm going to talk about today is how to train eight different models on Google Cloud TPUs. So you know that Google Cloud TPUs are uh, getting quite famous these days because they are kind of super fast compared to GPUs, the normal GPUs that we have at home. And uh, uh, But the, there's, a, there's a few problems there and we will come to that. But first of all, I would like to mention that my new talks series is starting next week and uh, it's a live show with live audience uh, on YouTube and you will be able to ask questions to the speaker so the speaker presents their cool projects or uh, their startup companies that they have which is related to machine learning or AI so this is not a podcast this is not a talk show but it's more like uh, a guest presenting something to the whole world and my first guest for this is Andre and uh, some of you might know him so look at his profile on LinkedIn so uh, Andre is known quite a lot for his contribution to uh, tutorials and kernels on Kaggle and uh, he's one of the most awesome guys I know and he has some cool project that he would like to share with us and I've learned a lot from him and the work he has shared in his kernels. So uh, if you look at his Kaggle profile, he's currently ranked one in uh, notebooks in the Kaggle kernels category. And he is, is a very nice guy. And uh, I thought it would be nice to invite him to start with. And I got lucky. He said, uh, yeah, he would be happy to join me. So uh, we will have him next week on Friday, 6 p.m., uh, European time and uh, if you want to be a guest on the show all you have to do is uh, fill out the form which is in the description box and tell me about your projects your work that you want to present and uh, if you have a startup you want to talk about it we can do that too and I will invite you to the show uh, I would just like to keep it non-commercial content so if you have commercial con content then it would be difficult for me and also for you and uh, it's not a lot to learn if you have commercial content so uh, it starts next Friday and stay tuned and now we go back to what we were uh, supposed to discuss today so I don't know if I should call it a tips and tricks video or what but uh, what we are going to do today is we're going to build a model so there won't be uh, any coding involved I will just show you how to do it because I've already shown you how to build models and train it on GPU uh, in the previous videos I showed you how to train a BERT model and, uh, on, a, on a GPU or a TPU so it's just an extension to that so to start with uh, let's look at the kernel uh, that I designed so here it is so what we do is uh, Kaggle provides you with 30 hours per week of TPU so that's quite uh, a lot of TPU time so you can go play around experiment there or you can go to Google Colab and uh, use the TPUs there for free so uh, first of all we install uh, PyTorch XLA uh, the nightly build and uh, it updates all your uh, all the libraries that you have uh, like torch and it installs pytorch xla after that it's not very difficult so if you just google uh, pytorch on xla devices uh, you will come up with this page it's uh, from pytorch and you see all you have to do is take care of this import so you import torch xla core uh, and then instead of device equal to cuda that you always use or device equal to cpu you have to use xm dot xla underscore device that's it now you have to remember 
XLA devices, in particular TPUs, have eight different cores. So what the idea that came to my mind, why not instead of training one model on all the cores, we can train uh, one model on each core and train them at the same time. So we can do that and it's pretty easy to do it. So first of all, uh, I export this environment variable that ensures that it's uh, using uh, FP16. Um, so it's a little bit faster and all uh, the import remains the same, but you need this torchxla.core xla model as XM. That's what I do. You don't need anything else from my previous videos. And then you define uh, a config. So we, you can even forget about this function right now. So you define a config and you say, okay, my learning rate is this much, uh, the maximum length that I want to use or whatever the parameters for your specific problem. If it's an image problem, it's going to be different than a natural language processing problem. And you say, define a batch size, batch size can be pretty huge. Uh, uh, and uh, some validation batch size. So batch size cannot be like uh, very huge because it's going to run out of memory uh, and epochs and everything else. So now everything remains the same in the code. So if you go back to one of my previous videos where I trained the BERT model for uh, question and answering systems, similar to question and answering systems, the code is the same. All that changes is towards the end of the code. So what we do is, uh, first of all, we create a function called run, or you can call it anything, train, train model function and that accepts a fold. So in this particular problem, what I'm trying to do is I divided training data into eight different folds. And so, so people usually do five fold, three fold. I'm doing eight folds because I want to train these eight folds on eight uh, TPU cores simultaneously. So I read the training data and that's global. I just read the training data here. I don't do anything else. The next thing that I do is to create this function called train or run and that accepts an argument called fold. The next, after that, I define the model. Okay, till here, uh, everything is the same. Now you have to keep in mind that you define the model inside this function and not outside uh, because then all the uh, cores are going to update the weights on the same model. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's not going to perform well and you will end up with only one model, which is not good. Uh, then I divide the training data into training and validation fold. So I have a column called K fold in the training data. And I say, if it's not equal to fold uh, value here, then uh, it's training. Otherwise it's validation. So we got that. And now what changes? is device. So instead of saying device is torch.cuda or just CUDA or CPU, you say it's uh, xm.xla device. Now inside this, you can provide an argument for the device index that you want to use. So the index for TPU devices uh, start from one to eight. So here I'm saying if my fold is zero, my device is one. If my fold is one, my device is two and so on and then you transfer the model to the device now now uh, in the general tpu videos uh, you must have noticed that i don't use this because uh, then it has to decide on its own uh, but for for this one i specify which device to use which core to use and then I have train data set and i have train data loader remains the same no changes uh, so uh, compared to training on all cores of TPUs, uh, it had a sampler, train sampler, validation sampler. You don't need that anymore. It remains the same as your original GPU kernel, uh, GPU code. So you, if you have, uh, if you have written a GPU training uh, code, all you need to do there is change the device to XM.XLA device, and then which device you want to use. And then um, everything else is the same, no changes. So when, when we trained on all the cores together, sometimes it becomes very difficult. Difficult in the sense you have to tune 
the batch size you have to tune the uh, learning rate uh, dep- because now you have lots of devices uh, running together training the same model so you have to adjust all these kind of things but when you transfer it from gpu to gpu all you have to change uh, maybe batch size a little bit because now you can use bigger batches compared to your usual home gpus and uh, depending on that maybe adjust the learning rate a little bit or don't do it at all that also works and still going to be fast so you don't have to do a lot of hyperparameter tuning when you transfer your code from GPU to one single TPU core. And then uh, in the end, when you save the model, instead of torch.save, you use xm.save, everything else remains the same. So there, there's no change there. Now the fun part comes. So we wrote a function uh, that takes fold as an input and trains one single model on one TPU core. Uh, now how to start them in parallel. So I made a tips and tricks video a while ago in which I showed, I talked about job lib and how you can uh, parallelize almost everything using job libs multiprocessing wrapper. Uh, so what, what we do here is we use job lib, but we use the threading backend. So it starts all these jobs and um, uh, I say, okay, I have eight different jobs. I use threading backend. If you use multiprocessing, it's gonna run out of memory probably. Uh, for threading, it doesn't. And then you have this delayed uh, function that takes your uh, function, the run function or train model function as an argument and says, okay, run it from ranging from zero to seven. Um, yeah, excluding eight from zero to seven so these are the eight folds uh, and it runs everything in parallel so let's see if if we can if we can do it right now so we will go way up and uh, try to run everything so let's run and let's run all of it and see what happens So it takes a while to install everything. Let me check. It's uh, done. Installing stuff, all these steps are done. And here we go. So it's starting the model training. And you have to remember that the first epoch is going to take a while. And um, Torch XLA is still very experimental but the developers are quite good uh, it's a lot of support for it so um and it's quite easy to use it so let's see if something bad is happening nothing bad yet so we can just wait for it to start training this step so i had to restart the kernel because this thing doesn't seem to work out and i also spent some time figuring out why so uh, it seems like there is some issue with Torch XLA uh, with their latest nightly build. But anyways, um, it, it, it's going to work when it's fixed and hopefully very, very soon. Uh, so how this will look like in the end, it's something like this. So you when you run this part of the code, it's you see that it's training on all eight different cores at the same time. Uh, so you're training eight different models and then in the end you will also get a uh, validation score for all of them at the same time. So it's quite easy and uh, quite simple to do the, this kind of thing. If you have five models you just need to replace uh, or five folds. You just need to replace this eight with five and this one with five and then you're good to go. And um, yeah. Yeah, you have to note that in those cases, it's not going to use the three remaining cores, but everything else is going to be fine. So that's it for today's video. Um, let me know uh, in comments uh, if I did something wrong or uh, how I can improve or in what uh, are the next new videos that you will like to take a look at. 
so any kind of suggestion is always welcome and um, uh, keep an eye out for the new series and uh, it's going to be uh, quite good i hope and useful for everyone and if you want to be a part of it then uh, fill up the form in the description box uh, below and uh, like subscribe and share my videos if you like them then thank you very much bye